Hello everybody, Brad Geiger for Web Comics Confidential, and we're going to talk about comic conventions one more time, uh, the last time for a little while, because I don't want this to become repetitive. There's a lot of great topics in web comics to cover, and I don't want to get bogged down too much in this. But I noticed something happening with this, and uh, it was too good to pass up. This is too good of a topic not to talk about. But it's going to be the last time we talk about comic conventions for a while. So uh, those of you who are webcomics.com members, hit me in the comments or uh, go up to that uh, contact button at the top of the site. Drop me a line. Let me know what other topics you'd like for me to talk about. Or if you have any questions you'd like me to address specifically, this would be a good time to get them in. But today, comic conventions one more time. So here's what happened to me when uh, I got the latest comments on the latest video. Uh, I, I went back and I realized that I've been writing about this topic, the decreased importance of comic conventions for a web cartoonist. Uh, I, the first time I talked about that subject was on webcomics.com back in 2013. This is a topic that I've been banging the drum on for four years. And... For much of those four years, I got very little response. There was there was very, very muted response to this topic, uh, going all the way back to when I started talking about it in 2013. And then I did a video, and I looked into the camera, and I said, I'm not doing these anymore. It's a net loss for me. Uh, and, I, and I encourage you to take some similar uh, decision-making uh, strategies so that you might uh, come, if not to the same conclusion, maybe come to a conclusion that used a little bit better decision-making tools than I was using uh, when I first started out. And then I got a response. And the response then was, well, maybe could we still do small conventions? We kind of had a laugh about that, about, you know, can I do it till I need glasses, right? Uh, and then I, we did that video, and I got another response that I'm going to read for you now. Brad, you've done cons for years, and now you probably don't need to because your Patreon is rocking and you have an established audience. Would it be fair to say that though you might not have made much money during the shows, it still gave you some exposure that paid off later? I'm not disagreeing with your choice not to do cons, just thinking about other possible benefits to them that may not be immediately apparent. I did my first con a few weeks ago. It was a free con, so it didn't cost me anything. I wasn't expecting to sell anything. I simply wanted to learn how to talk to people and possibly make a handful of fans. I learned a lot, got some email and snail mail subscribers. My salesmanship leveled up a bit. For me, I think it will pay off in ways not related to immediate sales. I also draw my tunes digitally on a Cintiq so I can draw while I'm there as well. It's possible for me to be productive. Anyway, just curious about your thoughts. And then it hit me like a ton of bricks. We're going through the stages of grief. This, this is the stages of grief. First, there was disbelief. And that is me posting on webcomics.com for four years about, you know what, guys? This isn't the revenue generator that it was in the early 2000s, and it hasn't been for a while. Uh, disbelief, zero, crickets, sky mauled, right? Then there was bargaining. Eh, what about just the small shows? Maybe can we just do it till we need glasses? Now we seem to be at denial. This applies to you, but not to me. And I fully expect anger next. Uh, I'm, I'm prepared for that. And I'm prepared to do what it takes to get you to acceptance. <laughs> I'm here for you. I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. Uh, but let's start from here. Uh, because this is, a, this is the most important thing I'm going to say in the whole video. So if you tune me out, uh, uh, you can do it after I say this. And that is very plainly, very frankly, I'm, I'm going to talk about the decision that I've made for me. It may not be the right decision for you. I am going to passionately advocate that you should take certain factors in mind as you're making the decision that's right for you. I'm going to passionately 
uh, advocate that you should be looking at the dollars and cents, uh, factoring in, is this a good use of my time? All of those things. Uh, but not only am I saying my decision might not be right for you, and, and, and although I'm going to passionately advocate for making a, a good decision-making process part of this whole thing, I don't care what you decide because I don't have to live with your consequences. I've got no skin in the game. I, I'm going to passionately advocate uh, my point, but I don't care if you go to a comic. -Con. I'm not going to be that vegan relative that we were kind of making fun of, the stereotypical vegan relative. I don't want to piss all the vegans off. Uh, you know, the, the, that guy that stares at you across Thanksgiving. I don't, I don't care. You want to go to conventions? You go to conventions. But we're going to talk about more about that in a little bit. Uh, but I don't care. I really don't. I don't have to live with your uh, with your consequences. I, can, I, I will say this. I've been doing this for a long time, and I, I think I've got a pretty good idea of where the path you're on is going to lead. And, and if you continue to make uh, decisions the way uh, some of these decisions I'm seeing uh, line up, you're going to, I, I think I can foretell what happens, but, you know, I, I, I don't have a crystal ball here. You know, it, it, you've got to make the decision that you, not only do you have to make the decision that's right for you, but you got to make that decision and own it because you're going to be the one that deals with the consequences, not me. Uh, I, and that's, that, that's irrefutable. I, I've got no skin in this game. Uh, so I want to talk about this comment and I'd like it, there's so much here that I'm going to take it literally line by line because there's a lot here that that I'm fascinated by uh, you've done cons for years and not, and you probably don't need to because your Patreon is rocking and you have an established audience number one I don't know what an established audience is and that's not bullshit I don't know what you're talking about with an established audience uh, I I, I, and it, not only me, I'm going to take this uh, off of me for a second. I know a lot of people who make their full-time living doing web comics, uh, and, and, and I talk to a lot of these people, and none of them feel as if they've got an established audience. Uh, I can I, I, none of them, none of them. I, I talk to all of these guys. Uh, none of them feel like they've got an established audience. They're still, just like me, just like you, out there uh, Think they live and die by the next update. They, they, and they've got to go out and earn that audience every time. Uh, they've got a bigger audience, perhaps in some cases, because they've been putting in the time and practicing and their work generates a larger following, as you will one day if you keep practicing and focusing on improving. Uh, and, and I don't mean you, the letter writer. I just I'm, now I'm talking to you, the video watcher. Okay, but uh, I don't know what an established audience is. I will say this: I, I'm I'm very proud of how I'm doing on Patreon. However, the way I got it to that point is by making exactly the kind of decision making process by making those kinds of hard, objective decisions that I'm talking about throughout all three of these videos now. I could not have gotten my Patreon to this point if I was focused on intangibles. I had to make some hard, objective, uh, passionless decisions, right? What's working, what's not. That's how I got that Patreon to where it is. Not by looking at intangibles, not by getting touchy-feely. Uh, that's something I leave for my characters. I had to use some really hard decision-making uh, skills. Uh, that's what I'm asking you to do with this topic. Go back to the letter here. Would it be fair to say, though, that you might not have made much money during the shows, although you might have made not much money during the shows, it gave you some exposure that paid off later? Okay. I would encourage you to read anything that I've written that has the word exposure on it. Uh, you may be new to the site. You may not have read How to Make Web Comics or the Web Comics Handbook. Anyone that has read a word that I've written on this topic knows how I feel about exposure. You, people die 
from exposure, okay? I'm not a big fan of exposure. Now, I, I, I know you're using the word maybe in a different sense. Uh, perhaps what you're saying is uh, you introduced some people to your comic and you feel good about that. And I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, for me, if I had put effort into two things, I could have enjoyed the same effect uh, that you're describing, but exponentially more. And those two things are, number one, targeted, clickable promotion. Not necessarily limited to social media, but that's the first category that comes right up. Targeted, clickable promotion. And number two, I'm going to say it again. You're going to hate me. Get ready. Here's where we come to anger. Doing a better comic. Working on improving my comic. All the time that I spent, uh, in, especially in the early years, if I would have instead taken that time that I was trotting out to comic conventions and worked on targeted clickable promotion and just getting better at my craft, doing better writing, uh, and, and that might have included not only doing it and looking at it objectively later, but also life drawing classes, uh, getting better at the crafts, uh, craftspersonship of doing comics, uh, creative writing courses, stuff like that, or, or writers groups, uh, where I, I, you're in a group of other people who are good and serious about what they're doing and getting honest feedback. Now, it's hard to get honest feedback, uh, especially writing, particularly humor, and you want to be very careful about where, you know, how you let that, uh, that feedback permeate into your creative process. But getting people who are demonstratively good at this and, uh, and, and taking that advice to heart and really using it uh, in, in, a, in a serious way, that would have been better use for me than going to a comic convention. But let's go to clickable promotion. So you go to a convention, you hand out flyers. How many flyers you hand out? 100, 200 flyers? Uh, how many people are you really reaching? You know that most of those people are never going to look at your flyer. Half of them are throwing it away when they get out of your eyesight, when they turn the corner. Uh, most of them that do keep it, put it in their bag and never look at it again. So you're getting a very small percentage of those people who are actually taking a flyer. Uh, so what are you getting? A dozen? Two dozen? I'm telling you right now, you hit the pause button on this video. You go out and you write a smart clever tweet. You use some of the strategies that we've talked about on webcomics.com. You can get better results sitting in your underwear in the next five minutes than spending four days at a comic convention with one tweet. I guarantee you, okay, if you if you do a, a, a good job of it, even if you do a shitty job, you can, you can, you know, by mistake, say something that, that uh, catches somebody's fancy. You, you, you could, you could put zero thought into it and get those kind of results. And you know you can. You've seen it happen by now, certainly. That you could get, if, you, if, you're, if your objective is to get a dozen people, I, honest to God, if you're handing out 100 flyers, we're talking in the dozens of people you actually reached. You can do that on Twitter in the next five minutes. Okay, unpause the video, like you paused it in the first place. Uh, but if you want, if you try that, Chart your results. You can do as good as an entire convention weekend. And that promotion is clickable, which means that they're not just looking at this shitty little flyer that you gave them. They're going to your site where they've got a chance to be uh, brought in by all the stuff that you've got going on at your site. And there should be a lot going on there if you're doing it right. Uh, they, you, if, if you do catch them, if you're lucky enough to grab them with that thing that's uh, posted today, uh, you can send them into the archives and cement that readership. Uh, if you're doing good promotion, you may not be pointing them to today's comic. You may be pointing them to a specific comic in your archive that you know is a grabber. Uh, and then let them go through the archives. Uh, come on. You can do better than a couple dozen with a single tweet or a single Facebook post or something on Instagram. Uh, you know you can do better than that. Uh, I, I don't need to belabor that. I did my first con a week ago. It was a free con, so it didn't cost me anything. Well, that's the definition of a free con. I wasn't expected to sell anything. I simply wanted to learn how to talk to people. Really? And possibly make a handful of fans. You're shooting low, pal. I learned a lot, got some email, and some snail mail subscribers. Okay, let's start from the end and work to the front. I 
do not want to know what a snail mail subscriber is. If you're printing your comics out and mailing them with a postage stamp to people, I, I, don't, I don't know what that is. And if I, I want you to do me the professional courtesy, if I ever do break down and ask, please don't tell me. I don't think I want to know what snail mail subscribers are. I, 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 there's, there's, I, I don't know. You, you, I'm stymied. You, you, you've got me at a loss for words. I'm glad you learned a lot. I'm not sure what you learned though. And I'm not saying that in a mean way. I, I you, you say you learned a lot, uh, and. As I'm seeing comic conventions take a smaller and smaller and a smaller role in this, uh, I don't know what application there is for the stuff that you may have learned. I, I don't know what you learned. Uh, I'm very happy to hear that you didn't spend any money. That was smart. And, and if this was an experiment on your part and you didn't spend any money, then you did it just right. Uh, I, I, assuming you didn't spend any money on travel, hotel, eating out, printing up flyers, God help you if you print up, tried to print up actually stuff to, to sell at the table. Uh, I, if you didn't spend any money on all, uh, on, on, or you spent a manageable amount for this experiment, then good, then you did exactly what I want you to do. But you folk, from, from your comments, you focused on all the wrong things. You focused on intangible, feel-good things, and we're going to talk more about that in a little bit. Uh, back to your comments. My salesmanship leveled up a bit. For me, I think it will pay off in ways not related to immediate sales. So your salesmanship is going to result in not immediate sales. Uh, that's great if your salesmanship levels up to the point where you can easily, predictably make a profit at future shows because if that happens, then you're right back to square one and you can justify going to comic conventions for yourself. Uh, if you, your salesman is good, uh, it's so good that you can sell and make a profit when you do honest accounting at these shows, then you should be doing more shows. Simple as that. I will say this about that. I've been accused of being a pretty good salesperson, but I'm not going to talk about me because uh, I don't want to make this... I, I'm trying not to get like, it's this way for me, so it must be that way for you. I'm trying to avoid that. I will say this, I know some web cartoonists who are fantastic salespersons. They are amazing, and some of them I stood right next to them through an entire weekend and, and stood in awe of what they were able to do in terms of like starting cold conversations and turn that into sales. I know some salespeople who are truly remarkable at this and they are cutting their comic conventions to one or two. These are people that used to do a dozen a year and they're cutting way back because they're seeing, they're coming to the same conclusions that I've been talking about for three videos now and countless posts going back to 2013. They're cutting way back. In other words, you can level up all you want, but the overall structure of what comic conventions have become are going to be such that even great salespeople are coming away dissatisfied at these shows. So you're leveling up to an area that doesn't have a whole lot of payoff, okay? Also, I draw my tunes digitally on a Cintiq so I can draw while I'm there as well. It's possible for me to be productive. You are officially a better cartoonist than I am because I know for me, I can't do work that I'm proud of sitting at a, at a shaky convention table that people are constantly nudging, getting interrupted all the time, and with horrible lighting. I, this is my studio. I've got to turn those fluorescents off when I work on my uh, Cintiq right here. And this is decent lighting. This is good lighting. Uh, the lighting at a convention is horrible. I can't do work that I am proud of at a convention. Uh, I can do a convention sketch uh, but again, there's a reason that those are uh, that, that I, I price those the way I do, and that those are not full illustrations. I the, the, you you grade them through a certain lens, uh, but but I, I I I'm telling you, I can't do work that I'm proud of uh, while I'm sitting there at a comic convention. You may be able to, and my I, I doff my cap to you, but I want you to think about this. 
if you're doing that great work down at your Cintiq and your head is down and you're drawn and you're you're doing it, uh, what you you can't be doing a good job of doing of uh, uh, of running your convention table because that stuff's happening out there, and your head is down here. Uh, I'm gonna respectfully submit that you can do a good job of one and you can do a good job of the other, but if you're trying to do them both, you're doing a half-assed job. I'm, I'm, and you may be different. You may be special. You may be have, you may have somebody sitting there by your table that's spotting for you. You may have a teamwork thing. You, there may be any number of things that uh, you may be doing and good on you if you are. For me, I can't do both without half-assing one or the other. Okay? So those are my thoughts about those comments. And they all boil down to this. You're focusing on the intangibles. You're focusing on feel-good things. You're focusing on, I'm going to be a better salesman someday, and, and that's going to somehow have a payoff. Uh, you're focusing on things like exposure. I, oh, I handed out all 100 flyers. Great. 5% of those are actually getting looked at. 1% is actually getting acted on. You wasted a lot of time. Uh, you, you're focusing on a lot of stuff that makes you feel good. And if that's what you're out for, then I want you to do that. I want you to own that. I want you to hold it. But don't kid yourself about what you're actually doing. Don't kid yourself into thinking that you're building a business because I'm going to argue that I don't think you are. And you've got to prove it. It doesn't matter what I think. Who cares what I think? You've got to prove it to yourself. And uh, today is April 18th. Uh, all taxes are due today, right? you got to prove it to, your, to the IRS uh, when you're a business. Uh, so do me a favor. Don't delude yourself. Uh, and, and, here's, here's what, and I'm not saying that in a tongue-in-cheek way. I'm not saying that in a mean way about deluding yourself because here's, and this is the really interesting part. You thought that part with the stages of grief. You thought, hey, yeah, yeah, Geiger was really, wait till you hear this because everything I'm hearing here, I know where it's coming from and I know it because I felt it. I've been there. I know exactly what's going on. You're going, the the reason you can't let go of uh, going to a comic convention is because where a comic convention for me has become purely dollar and cents for you, a comic convention is something different, and I understand. And it's not a bad thing. I totally get it. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you how I know. I follow a bunch of you guys on Facebook. I follow tons of web cartoonists at all different levels. People that have been doing it longer than me. People who have been doing it for 10 years. People who have been doing it for five years. And some guy just started last Tuesday. Okay? And they are, at some point, when you go to a comic convention... It's not about, especially when you're starting out, it's not about dollars and cents. It's about two things, affirmation and acceptance. That's, it, it, I, I hear, I, just yesterday, I saw some guy post on Facebook, I just got accepted at uh, XYZ uh, uh, comic convention. And this is so great. I'm going to set up my table. I can't wait. And you can hear it in the type. It's, this person just got affirmed as a web cartoonist. And I understand. I totally get this. Because it's hard to be a web cartoonist and think, am I really an official web cartoonist? There, there, there's not that, that gatekeeper that says, boom, you're a guy, you're, you're one of the guys now, you're one of the girls now, uh, you're one of us. There's none of that. Uh, who, who, who can tell if he's really a web cartoonist? And I get the concept not only of affirmation, but of acceptance. You go back to the early days, uh, a bunch of us, we would get into, and you can still, you can probably find a couple of them on uh, webcomics.com. There, we would, us early web cartoonists, we would get into vicious flame wars with members of the National Cartoonist Society, the NCS, because they didn't originally want us as members. And not getting that, af- that uh, uh, acceptance was painful. And we fought them. We'd, oh man, you can go back and see some vicious words being spouted back and forth across the ether. Uh, on that very subject, I get needing acceptance. I get needing affirmation. 
somebody comes up to you and says they read your comic and they love it, getting that kind of affirmation, I totally get that. It's tough being a web cartoonist. It's, it's tough being any kind of a cartoonist. Those of us who work in humor, you're writing jokes all the time and you never get to hear the audience laugh. You don't whether, know whether those jokes are landing or not. Uh, and, and those of us across the spectrum, you, it's hard to tell if your work is actually grabbing people, if it's actually compelling to them. I get needing that affirmation. I, and if somebody buys it, actually picks a, reaches into their wallet and pulls out a, a $20 bill and buys a book, I get it. I get that feeling. I totally, totally get it. Just don't delude yourself as to why you're there. You're there to make yourself feel better. Okay? And that's okay. And if you are managing your expenses, a little bit of feel good, maybe you've earned it. Maybe you need a little bit. At some point, if you are ever going to transition from that to building a business, you're going to have to make a few decisions that don't feel good. You're going to have to make a few decisions that really, really hurt. Some, object some objective decisions, all right? And you're going to have to say, you know what? I, I, I'm going to have to let go of the feel-good stuff for a little while and start working on what I need to work on to run my business. That's the kind of stuff you're going to have to do. But if you're not there yet, if you need a little bit of that affirmation, if you need the acceptance, if you need to have that, uh, uh, that little uh, tag around your neck that says that you're a cartoonist, I get that. I, I needed it too, all right? Just don't, don't spend too much money doing it, and don't kid yourself that it's anything other than what it is. Okay, and work towards getting to that point where you don't need that anymore. That's a good place to be. All right, so that's the last time we're going to talk about comic conventions for a little while at least. Hit me in the comments. Tell me if you think I'm, uh, I'm right or I'm still way off base. I'm ready for anger, but we're going to get to acceptance. Okay, and, uh, and do hit me in the comments and in the contacts with uh, some more topics. Your questions are great. I love these questions. And uh, like I said, if I get a, a, a good one like that, I can talk for an entire 20 minute uh, uh, span of time uh, and really dig deep on some of these issues. And I think those are uh, some, some pretty strong shows. So, Web Comics Confidential, my name is Brad Geiger. Check out more at webcomics.com and we'll see you next time.